Hey YouTube, what's up? Chris Gardner here talking to you about how we can use a Photoshop in your data set preparation. Um, you know, in my case, or in this case that I'm going to show you uh, for image segmentation, which is a little side project I've been working on, going to do a little hypothetical with, uh, you know, some aquarium images. When you're talking about building a data set, you often have to do the same thing multiple times. So while we're at it, we are going to make it into an action. Uh, so first things first, let's just pretend that we are separating aquatic life in pictures. Um, so we've got two here. Uh, let's go with this guy. It's going to be a little easier. First one. So I've been doing a project with uh, the UNet image segmentation model. I can link the tutorial I was following below and what prompted me to kind of do this for my own set. Uh, but in the meantime, let's just get started with how we make it happen. So first things first, we want to have our actions. Okay, and let's get rid of default actions and we will make a new one and call this a uh, workspace segmentation. Because you're gonna wanna set it up in a similar way every time before you do your human related inputs. Uh, so let's let's do this. Firstly, let's make sure it always starts off with the colors we want. Then let's go solid color, black. Now in my case, I was working with a binary segmentation. That just means black and white. So it's either kind of like a yes, this is something I'm interested in or no, it's not. Uh, so that's what we'll work with first. And for now, let's call this um, unmasked. And let's turn that off for now. And let's go with another one. And let's make it red. And let's make it somewhat see-through. And we'll call this workspace. And the reason why I did this is because it's sort of when we're painting over something, if let's say you are using white to paint with over something that is primarily white in the picture, you may not know exactly how much coverage you have. So I made a, a temporary kind of contrasting color. And now here we go. And we're gonna turn off that contrasting color later. So next one is this mask, and that's gonna be our working one. I like, um, you know, working with the lasso here, but the brush also works and, and any other type of kind of image selection process you like to use. Now, for now, I'm going to stop this action. We're going to want to stop it every time at right about here so that we can start doing things specific to each image, and then we want to finish them off. So first action is done. And now in the case of this image, let's just select our, what looks like a catfish maybe. It's from the Toronto Aquarium. And we'll just speed up this portion of the video. And there we go, we have our selection. And really this is part of the reason why I want to use Photoshop is because of its selection abilities. Uh, and this is a good time to remember some shortcuts. So I'm gonna use G to grab this fill paint bucket. I'm on white already and fill it in. And there we have it. We're gonna pause there for a minute. So here's the other software that people often use. Uh, VGG image annotator and I did consider this for a while but it just you know to me being familiar with Photoshop and already working with my photos in there uh, being my own custom data set and having some pretty complex selections this just looked a little clunky to me like it is free you can host it you can obviously do things Photoshop can't like this is um, appears to be dealing with video and and whatnot so that's kind of outside the scope of what i'm showing you uh photoshop is good for but you know photoshop i managed to plow through kind of 200 or 250 high resolution photos uh with some complex masks in a couple hours so here we go uh let's go back to photoshop now let's set up our new action and let's go uh segment finish so uh, let's turn on our unmasked portion. We no longer need the color background material. And let's get rid of our workspace because we don't need the contrast. So to finish off the final steps, we are going to go image, mode, 
index color. That means it's only going to save it with as many colors as we are actually using uh, here. So we're going to go here, flatten, which is fine as long as it looks like this, in our case of binary segmentation. And let's go to local selective. And right now, let's just pick our two colors. Uh, forced black and white, that's fine in our case, uh, and, and in most cases, so we can leave that. And just like that, it should be done. Now you should see some aliasing for sure. Uh, you know, one characteristic is if you get these little on, off, off, on, off, you know, kind of stepping of your edges. And now the final step of our action is going to be to save as, and it should be a, a GIF, in my case anyways, for the tutorial I was following. And just like that, you know, I didn't save mine, but in your case you would. We hit stop, and now uh, this image would be completed. We go to our next one. We don't want to save over top of our original in most cases. Uh, it may depend on how you're setting up and working with your data, but in my case I didn't. And had I saved this right here, it would not be asking me this. So don't save, and then let's say we want to set up with our next image, we are going to just hit up this. Now we have our workspace, and let's say we want to use our brush this time. And the other thing I should point out is always work with maximum hardness. Um, and you know, if you're on these kind of selections, lasso and whatnot, zero feathering, because like we saw with the stepping, it just turns into either yes or no pixels and um, feathering will not be helpful in that case for the most part. So uh, let's just do a really quick paint over here. And let's just say we were selecting aquatic life that was the subject of a photo in uh, our image segmentation model here. And when we're all done, with our painting and there we go that's it it would be saved and we'd be on to our next image so you know sometimes you could get it down to 10 20 seconds per image and uh, have it saving in the file formats you want uh, that seemed a lot faster to me than working with docker images or in browser Unfortunately, this one is $10 per month to use, but I already have that. So I figure a lot of people also do. And photographers like myself, we kind of already have big data sets at our disposal. It's just not usually well set up. And part of that may be because as photographers, we don't always know how to set up our uh, stuff for data sets, or maybe we don't even have a need or desire to. But in my case, I did. So I learned how to do this. If you want to see the tutorial I am following in order to complete my image segmentation task, uh, it would be through this YouTube channel, Aladdin Pearson. He does a lot of machine learning type videos and tutorials in that regard. So uh, the one that I was following, you know, he's got a lot. We can just search through here, UNet from scratch. That's the one. I recommend you check it out. Now, one final step back in Photoshop. Now let's say that you didn't have so simple of a segmentation task and you wanted to, instead of doing binary, you wanted more semantic, which would be related to picking out multiple objects in a single scene and having a model that's capable of distinguishing those objects. How can we make Photoshop a little easier for that too? Let's try this out. We are going to go to swatches here. If you don't have it visible, window at the top, swatches. All right, and before we get started, let's make a new color. Uh, and you will want to do this for probably each model you're making because we're going to give these colors names just so that uh, it kind of helps us when we're in this end of things. Let's call this um, semantic. Sure. All right, I'll, I'll get rid of that one. I started recording this video last night and got interrupted by some kids. And so here we go. Let's uh, delete that group. All right. Uh, so let's just say that in our case, we want to identify a few things. We want to identify the sky, we want to identify water bodies, and we want to identify land. Previously, we were working with just black and white, but in this case, we would need multiple colors. So let's say that we start creating a swatch for each one. And the way swatches work is 
we can just pick a color that we want to use maybe for land every time and let's use green in that case and let's call this one a land and now we want one to use for the sky sky is kind of conflicting with the water which we might also want blue but let's pick uh how about this baby blue for the sky and we will add this as sky blue and let's get a nice dark blue for our water let's call this water blue and now all we have to do is when we are you know opening multiple images using our actions we already set up we just are using the brush or you know the fill bucket and looking and right here we have the handy little indicators of what color we are representing with so sky blue we can and so on and so forth and the cool thing about photoshop is that we have the access to layers so you can kind of be a little rough with a certain selection and then have a good quality selection maybe for the land that will go on top of the rough sky selection you did and same thing applies as you know even more so than before is we talk about this uh, feathering when you have feathering of two colors you are creating new colors in between and a bunch of new colors um, for every step of the feather so that is something to pay attention to when you are going to the um, image mode index color but first let's finish this off okay and obviously being super rough here and we'll finish it off with the water turn them all back on and let's just get our water back on top and this is part of what i'm talking about with the layers and we're all good to go now we finish the step similar to before mode index color flatten layers sure and we are only doing black and white so this is kind of like different steps of dithering i think would we have in there but if we call it five then we have all of our original colors that's because we're using black and white plus you know which is a forced you don't have to force it we could get away with three here and still be fine but if we go three with black and white we only get one of our colors um so you know how how you choose that may depend on what you're segmenting and how it's all being read by your model but in any case photoshop is perfectly capable in this regard and haven't seen too many videos about it thought i would share just what i've discovered in my own adventures and uh hope it all goes well for you please leave some comments questions down below thanks for watching and catch you at the next one